Now genetics and cancer. Mutations in two genes named BRCA1 and BRCA2 have been linked to greatly increased risks of breast and ovarian cancer. Last week, Frederica Whitfield spoke with two women who tested positive for the mutations and had surgery. Well, it was everything for me. I watched my mother die a horrible death from ovarian cancer. And then shortly after that, I watched my sister battle ovarian cancer. And she also has the BRCA1 gene. And after she was tested and went through eight rounds of chemotherapy, I knew that I had to get tested for the BRCA1 gene as well. I was actually really pro-surgery. Not everyone is. It isn't for everybody. But I couldn't live with that anxiety anymore. I drove myself crazy all, every year, every mammogram, and just panic until the mm -hmm. next year. Dr. Ora Gordon is the co-author of Positive Results, Making the Best Decisions When You're at High Risk for Breast or Ovarian Cancer, and she joins us now from Los Angeles. Doctor, good to see you, especially nice to have you here on this very important topic that we definitely need to discuss. What is the BRCA gene? Let's start with that. And what is the difference between one and two? The BRCA genes were two genes that were discovered in the 1990s, which served to help protect our DNA from damage. When a copy doesn't work properly, it greatly increases the risk for breast and ovarian cancer. Both BRCA1 and 2 increase the risk for breast and ovarian cancer many fold above that of an average risk woman. But BRCA1 tends to occur much earlier, and BRCA2 has more cancer risks for men. And who is likely to have this gene? Most likely. It's very important for one to really have a good understanding of their own family history. The greatest risk are in those women who have had or have a family history of early onset breast cancer before the age of 50, have a personal family history of ovarian cancer, have multiple breast cancers in their family, any male breast cancer, and also certain ethnic groups are at elevated risk for carrying one of these genetic changes, specifically Eastern European Jewish individuals known as Ashkenazi Jewish people. You, but you their mutations are found in everywhere in the world. And you see women who find out that they've tested positive for the gene, and then they go ahead and they have a mastectomy or a double mastectomy. Is it, what, what are the odds that if you do test positive that you will get breast cancer? Is it a certainty? It's, it's critically important that, thank you, Randy, for, for asking that. The predisposition increases your risk anywhere from 50 to 80% in your lifetime, but it is not a guarantee that you will get cancer and you may go your whole life without cancer. So it's a very unique position to be in, to be at elevated risk without a certainty of cancer, and having one of these mutations does not mean that you will get cancer. There really is a trident's fork of options for women who test positive, which range from increased surveillance, preventive medications, preventive um, vitamins, to surgery. Uh, but when you hear this, some of these women that we just heard from who had spoken with Frederica before, th they can't live with the not knowing and they can't live in fear uh, right. of waiting to see if they get cancer. So, I mean, do you, is there a better option or another option really that you recommend besides just vitamins or taking care of yourself? Well, preventive surgery is the definitive risk reduction strategy. It reduces your risk to less than 1% for getting breast cancer in your lifetime many times lower than even the average risks woman for getting breast cancer. So it really is the goal in terms of risk reduction. Mm -hmm. But it is a, a big undertaking and it is a very dramatic and a personal decision. So we offer everyone the range of options and sometimes it's an evolution. The reason why they're called previvors is because it's this unique psychologic place to be in. You don't have a cancer diagnosis, yet you're facing these inordinate risks. And, and everyone has to make an individual decision. And just quickly for anyone watching, if they wanted to go and get tested, uh, what does the test involve and how quickly can you get the results? So the test is very simple. It's a blood test or a cheek swab test. Uh, generally, it's uh, very strongly recommended that they first meet with a genetics professional to get their family history to really understand what the chance is of testing positive, what a negative test means. For some high-risk women, a negative test does not mean that they're off the hook. For other women, the test doesn't have that much implication or may even have an ambiguous result. But it takes about two weeks. It's available everywhere in the country. Uh, the cost of testing ranges from 
um, under $1,000 to $4,000, mm -hmm. but is covered by insurance. All right, Dr. Ora Gordon, thank you so much for that very valuable information. We appreciate your time today. Why